All right, guys, we are back on Church Mag's Minecraft server, and we're going to do a little more uh, Minecraft theology. It's dark outside. Let's go sleep. I wanted to go explore real quick outside. I don't think you guys is... Ooh. Is there be monsters outside? Hello. Oop, he moved just far enough away. So I wanted to show you guys outside for just a brief second. I think he had a helmet on, so he's probably going to still try to shoot at us. Um, we haven't done a ton here because a lot of people are venturing out, but we have a potion area. I don't know if you've seen. There's a nice little... Oh my goodness, I'm going to die. A nice little 8-bit right there, which looks like it's missing a couple pieces. And over here, I think there's something new. Maybe not. I know that people were thinking about putting some stuff in here. Do we got any monies? We got some monies. More monies. Nice. So I need to make more chest place and axes. I've actually been on a whole tear of building stuff, which is why I have these brand new perfect shovels. Um, I'm going to take one to the capital. I'm going to use one of them for today. The other thing that we desperately need, well, let's just put this one here now. The other thing that we desperately need is gravel because the capital's store, our uh, mine mart, is um, out of gravel because um, I think Red Tops is building, needs a bunch of gravel to make a lot of concrete. And so, where am I going? Um, I figured one way to get gravel would be to go out and find some of it somewhere. But the other thing is, is we already have all of these mines down here that we could utilize. They've already been dug out for us. And I know that the people that have been going into them before have been going into them because they wanted to get the precious metal stuff. I don't have a pick on me. That was dumb. Um... And so they are going to try to find other stuff, but they're not necessarily going to be grabbing the gravel itself. So I thought we could just go down all these aisles, and when we come to it, grab all the gravel. That's dangerous. Um, ooh, even redstone. Yeah, I don't have my pick, so I can't grab any of this stuff. Um, but I thought it'd be a good time to grab some of this while we chat. Uh, I am going through a book. Technically, there's some right there. I'll leave that. You know what? I'm going to take it. I want to one of these episodes. That could have been so bad. The problem is, is I got efficiency 5 on this. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about a uh, topic of leadership. And the reason I wanted to talk to you guys about it was because I'm reading, I'm currently reading a book called Grit. And if you've never read the book Grit, it talks about how um, leaders or uh, people make progress in their life. Um, CEOs or businessmen or pastors get a lot of stuff done in their life. And the question is, why is it? Um, so you look at someone that's like an Olympian. And you would say that they just have a natural talent to do a lot of good stuff. Nope. Shame on you for following me. Alright, well, we're going to make this not good for you. Come on in. I'm right here. Come on. Good. Haha, <laughs> I win. I win. Um, and so it talks about this idea of raw talent. And we would definitely say that there's a lot of people that have a lot of talent. This is what I'm talking about right here. Look at all that good stuff. Look at all this right here. Untouched gravel. Just going to take it all. Um, and, and this book would say that that just basically means if we're going to go that route that... Um, for those of us that don't have this raw talent that we see, um, that we are destined to always be one step behind everybody else. And the 
question is, is it true? Is it really because of raw talents that people are better? Now, the book clearly addresses the fact that it's like in sports, if you are bigger, um, your bone structure just simply gives you that gift of um, longer legs or you're taller, of course you're going to be able to dunk better than most people because your body is built that way. So that's not necessarily what this is talking about. It's talking about the things that separate us is simply our capacity, and it's not necessarily a capacity of they just have this thing we would call talent as better. And it's a really cool discussion because um, it looks at it in a variety of different ways. I'm going to have to use some of the scrabble to get up here. Um, it, the book starts off with this look at ooh, lapis. Um, this idea of the military and to get into a military academy, I actually worked on the Air Force Academy for um, four years of my life and to get into the military academy you have to be not only smart but you also have to be athletic, you have to have determination um, and you have to have a good social aspect of yourself. It's kind of a vague way of basically saying be able to um, keep yourself well, especially like if you were to get shot down in an airplane during war, um, you have to be able to make friends with the local population, you have to be able to take care of yourself, not go crazy, not talking to people for days, months. That's not good. Or years at a time. Well, I guess I just lost some gravel. Um, and so it's just it's such a fun exercise of what this looks like. I gotta go back around. There's so much redstone here too. Um, of what this looks like for people that want to do well. And the idea that they found, this lady that wrote the book, she's a psychologist. The thing that she found is that it's not your SAT scores that would get you into the Air Force Academy or the um, West Point with the Army. It's not your physique in the sense that you are um, stronger than other people because, in fact, those tools that the military had been using in the past actually did not account for people that would drop out fairly soon into the um, entire career of the military people the soldiers, the cadets. And so she would try to go into it and try to figure out what's going on. And she came up with this term grit. That's basically because of passion, because of um, potential and a person's effort that they put towards it, that you can do as much or more than other people that may have what we would call raw talent. She actually talks about the fact that it might not even be talent this mythical thing that we kind of glamorize, but it's actually um, an un, uh, unconscious effort that nobody had really looked at and caught on to. So if you are raised around a coach that has a strong work ethic, you're probably either going to quit or you're going to succeed, which means that you're going to be pushed and you're going to learn that work ethic from the coach. If you have parents that do the craft of the sports, the, ooh, hello, hello. Um, if you have parents that do the craft, like let's say you want to be a scientist and your parents are scientists, obviously you're going to be learning at a very young age about science ideas. It's going to be ingrained in you. And of course you're going to have this thing that they would call raw talents because you've been soaking that in your entire life. Now, my family is not a bunch of counselors, even though that's my career, but my dad was a pastor. He's a salesman. He knows how to interact with people. Um, being from a family where you are constantly interacting with aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins, I'm constantly interacting with my family. Ooh, even more. And so... This whole idea of talking about problems, I mean, from a, just simply from a faith understanding, is always present in my life. And so I just had kind of a, a natural response to it because that's what my family was already doing all of the time. And so this idea of wanting to help people that were hurting, I mean, that's my faith tradition. That's 
I, that's a huge thing about my Christian walk of serving other people, of helping other people that are hurting, that are sinning, that are um, lost and not sure how to move forward in life. Like that's something I've been practicing since I was one year old. And so for me to say I'm a gifted counselor doesn't mean anything. It just simply means I've been practicing it longer than other people. And, and so it's interesting when you talk about this with um, those that would say they want to be gifted. So if you are, I say all this to basically promote, if you are a teenager that's trying to figure out life and you don't know what to do, this book would say, keep at it. Keep trying to push in and figure out what it is that you want to do for yourself. Like that's the most important thing that you could potentially do for yourself is to keep trying and figure out what your passion is. Now that might mean that you need to continue to practice, practice, practice. Um, if you want to be in the orchestra, if you want to be in the choir, you're going to have to put a lot of effort into this. Did I just come the wrong way? I did. Um, if you want to be in computer engineering, if you want to be a pa pastor, you're going to have to put a lot of effort into this. It's going to have to be something that you put like five hours a day after you've gone to school or oh, crud. Let's just run by him real quick. Nope. Don't hit me. Not good. All right. Moving on. Um, just because you, you're going to want to make your craft better, you're going to want to do this thing, whatever this thing is, that much better. We're in a showdown right now. I'm afraid to go by the lava right now. Let's see. What do we got up here? I'm going to get lost on camera, aren't I? Haha. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, I'm going to get lost if I go that way. So when you want to do these things, when you want to accomplish some goals for yourself, ultimately the thing that you need to do is to keep persistent, to be, to have this grit. Now, um, to really understand what grit is, you're going to have to read the book. Um, I'm not going to summarize the whole thing in this um, 10 minute vlog or let's play. Um, but it definitely is something where you are persistent. You are keeping at it. No matter what things get in your way, you're going to persevere. You're going to push through it to make sure that you can accomplish your goals. Oh my goodness. Hit him in the lava. Hit him in the lava. Persist, persist, persist. Yes. Oh my goodness. That was close. <laughs> um, and it doesn't mean that you're going to be successful in the sense of like what society would call successful with making money off of it. Um, but it does mean that you will end up doing your best at the process and, and succeeding in different ways, whatever that could potentially be. It's so cool to, to read this, to be inspired by it, to kind of just walk along where the book leads in this conversation. And I think this is, I honestly truly believe that this is a biblical principle. Um, look at the things that were happening in the Bible, especially the Old Testament. The Old Testament is such a great understanding of what it means to do something well. Um, even the New Testament, whenever we're looking at the disciples, let's go ahead and start making some new paths down here. These ones are like super long. Um, when you look at the understanding of the, the whole Bible, um, look at what Paul did. He, he was the best um, Jewish priest of his time. And then he went against his own sayings and had to push through even when people were um, spitting at him. They were um, obviously tearing into him and his family. He got incarcerated. He still continued to press on. He still continued to push for the sake of the gospel. And this idea of perseverance is Paul's life. It's the same thing with Joshua. Joshua pushed and pushed and pushed, and he was he ended up being rewarded in the end. Same thing with Abraham. And so 
all these men were gifted by God because of their perseverance and perseverance in things that God had called them to be present in. And I think that the one thing that this book lacks, and rightfully so because it's a secular book, is this understanding of um, God's calling. I think that if God calls you to something and you continue to be faithful in it, that I think that there's nothing that could stop you. Ooh. Mm, I'm going to wait until I got a fortune pick. And so we have to realize that we, um, as stewards of God's calling, of God's command, need to do the best that we can. We need to persevere. What? Oh, I'm like, what in the world is this? Okay. There's a whole bunch of iron just sitting there because I had a beacon here for right under the um, farm at Spawn Town. I'll have to go grab all the iron. Um, and so it's just this fun um, look into how scripture and psychology combine to understand that really we just need to give it all our, our all. We need to understand what God's calling for us is. And that's a whole nother conversation for another day. But we really need to understand what God's call is for us. And then once we know what that is, once we've seen what God has asked us to do for his kingdom, for his purpose, it's going to get done, um, whether by our hands or someone else's. Um, but we need to really push into that. We really need to be able to say, okay, we've done everything we can for the sake of the gospel. Um, whether it's evangelizing to other people, whether it is... Um, serving, whether it's discipleship and worship and all these different things, whether it's in our occupation or our families, there's so much that could be done that we need to be able to make sure that we're doing everything for. I'm just checking these big rooms because like sometimes when the ceiling's high, I don't actually take out the gravel, but for some reason, all these areas are like completely cleaned out. Well, maybe that was the extent of all of our gravel coming into here. I might have been too good at clearing the areas out. Because I don't see anything. I'm going to give it, I'm going to go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, please. Awesome. Persistence, right? I'm literally just talking about persistence. I just got to keep being persistent and I will find the gravel. Um, these do have silk touches, so that's good. I've been on a whole escapade of getting experience, so doing a lot of AFK fishing. Um, I try as much as possible. I don't know for people that have done this before, but your AFK fishing um, works well in short bursts, but if you just let it sit there for a long time, you're not actually maximizing your efficiency with getting experience. So like after an hour coming in, looking at the computer, upgrading your stuff, putting books on it, because when you're at lower levels, like I'm currently at zero right now, um, that means that you're going to be able to get a lot more experience from, ooh, nice, literally what I needed. Um, that experience is going to build up faster when you're at lower levels than if you're in higher levels. So I try to snag as much as I can in short bursts because I think I'm more efficient that way. Hopefully that made sense. It made sense in my mind. Well, let's go grab it. Huh. People went that low. Get all this. I'm literally just going to get all this and put it in my shop to make sure I have some more to sell. So hopefully I come out of here with a couple of stacks. Problem is, is I'm not lighting this up. I probably should have done that. All right. 
Grabbed all that. Is there any more? Is that the end here? Oops. Missed some. That was the end of this. I think I'm going to call it at that. This has been a 20 minute episode. I'd like to hear what you guys have to think on this conversation of um, leadership of maybe you want to call it fortitude. The military calls it resiliency. Um, but what's your thought about this conversation of trying to do your best of it's not about talent, um, but in my own personal belief, it is about um, calling and it is about fortitude. I constantly am talking on the Church Mech podcast about this conversation of doing your best work, putting your best foot forward, um, not only for the sake of um, making sure that you're doing your best, but also because God's watching you. And sure, you may have made it, cheated the last customer out of a couple extra bucks, but your faith is on the line with this. Your um, your home in heaven is impacted by that. Your relationship with God is impacted by that. And I think that that's, I don't know if we give that as much thoughts when we do stuff whether it's our schoolwork or our marriage or our parenting or being a kid, our jobs, our hobbies, all those things, I think are I think it's important just to do your best. Do your best whether people are watching or whether they're not. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm going to go drop off all this gravel. Oh, my. Yes, I love it. All right, guys, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys next time. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye.